All right, so what I wanted to do today was to just kind of um, clarify and kind of fill in the blanks of the video that you just watched. Um, so first of all, let's just define what a fluid is. A fluid is essentially something that can easily flow. So for our purposes, that just means a liquid or a gas. Okay, solids would be the state of matter that um, is not a fluid. Um, let's look at pressure. So again, as was defined, pressure is going to be force per area. Okay, and so let's just take a look at this uh, a little bit. Let's say, for example, I have a knife. Okay, there's a knife right here, right? And I could take my hand with the knife, and if I take this end, okay, which has a pretty large area, I could easily bang my finger with this, and it's going to be no problem. However, if I take the other end, which has a very tiny area, right, and I do the same thing with the same force, right? In this case, I didn't actually do it, but if I would have, there'd be blood everywhere. And in this case, even though the force would be the same, since the area is so small, since the area is so small, right, then that means the pressure would be huge. And so even though the force is the same, that small area would give us a huge pressure, hence blood. Um, we usually talk about pressure with respect to like gases. Well, in this case, we're talking about fluids, right? And so if we have gas or um, a solid, uh, sorry, gas or a liquid. So for example, let's say we have some gas here and we're gonna put it in a jar. Um, and what we're talking about here is, is these atoms, since they're in motion, as these atoms slam against the wall and rebound, Right? There's going to be an impulse on that. There's going to be a force exerted against the wall. Well, each individual atom is going to apply a force. So it doesn't really make much sense to talk about the force of these teeny tiny atoms. What makes more spent sense is to look at this whole area here and say, oh, okay, the force per area, if we look at all the force of each of the atoms per this given area, that's going to give us a pressure and that's going to make much sense more sense so we're often not going to talk about forces we're going to talk more about pressure when we talk about fluids um, notice the units here this is a newton per meter squared we call this a pascal all right another unit that we use a lot is the atmosphere which would be one atm or one atmosphere and that's just going to be 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals okay, or newtons per meter squared. That's a unit that we'll use a lot. So let's next take a look at the equation that was derived. And this equation looks something like this. P bottom equals P top plus rho G H, okay? And actually the way you'll see this written often looks more like this. P equals P naught plus rho G H. And again, what this means is if we have some container and we have a fluid in here and we want to know, oh, what's the pressure down here at the bottom? Well, the pressure down here at the bottom is going to be the pressure here at the top, which we're going to call P initial. And then the pressure down here, so it's going to be the pressure here plus the density of our liquid, um, little g or whatever little planet we happen to be on and then H would be the height of the liquid above. So notice as H goes up, as this H increases, so you have more fluid on top, we put a greater fluid on top, there's gonna be a greater pressure at the bottom. And again, that's just because you have more on top pushing downwards, right? All these atoms on the top are gonna to be pushing down against it. Okay, um, one of the important concepts to understand with this is that um, notice that the area doesn't matter what the area is here. So for example, if I had a container like this, if I had a container like this, if I had a container like this, and each of them I filled to the exact same height, the pressure at the bottom would be the same. So all that matters is how high this is above. Okay, and then of course, whatever this is. So if you put something else, put mer mercury for instance, then it would be different. All right, uh, another terminology you'll often see is what's called a gauge pressure. 
or an absolute pressure. So what we've been talking about is actually absolute pressure. So our, my pressure down here at the bottom would be my absolute. What my gauge pressure is, is this is essentially what the pressure is minus the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so in other words, um, let's say I want to know what the pressure is down here at the bottom, right? I'm, this is a swimming pool. Here I am up here. I'm curious. Okay, what's this pressure down here at the bottom? Well, we don't really care. We know the pressure up here is going to be one ATM. We don't really care that down here maybe it's a million ATMs because, uh, sorry, we don't really care that it's going to be, um, we know it's going to be more than one ATM. So what we really care is relative to that atmosphere, how much is it down here at the bottom? So you essentially just subtract out whatever the initial pressure is. So for example, if my pressure absolute is, I'm just going to use ATMs for simplicity. If it's three ATMs, then my gauge pressure would be two ATMs. So we would simply subtract out that um, what, whatever the pressure is of one single atmosphere. Notice if you look at the equation here, that means that this all by itself, we can call the gauge pressure. So let's go ahead and do an example problem. Let's say, for example, uh, you go swimming, okay? And let's say in the swimming pool, uh, let's say it's about nine feet or about three meters okay and here you are let's say you go swimming at the bottom here's you hanging out the bottom right we want to know um, you know maybe what is the absolute pressure at the bottom Okay, so we could do this pretty easily. We'll just say, oh, P at the bottom is equal to P at the top. Remember, P at the top would be right here, which is going to simply be one atmosphere plus our rho GH. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do this 1.01. .01, that's one atmosphere. So we'll say this is one ATM, which is 1.01 .01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals plus density of water. Okay, is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. 1,000, little g is 9.8, and then this would be three meters. Okay, so we can go ahead and calculate the pressure down here, plug it in. You should get about 1.3 times 10 to the fifth pascals. So this would be our absolute pressure, how much pressure there is down there at the bottom. Now the gauge pressure would simply be, well, if we subtract out one atmosphere, right? And notice what happens here. The gauge pressure would be P minus our P naught, P absolute minus our P naught, which would simply be, oops, pull this up, which would simply be our rho GH, okay? So when you calculated this out, you should have gotten about 29,000. All right, so that's the pressure that we're going to feel down there at the bottom. Now let's take, for instance, let's look at our eyes. Let's say, okay, here's my eyes, right? I'm down here hanging out at the bottom. What is the force on one of my eyes? How much force is going to be exerted on one of my eyes? So simplicity, for simplicity, let's just say we have a perfectly round eye. Let's just say this is has a radius of one centimeter, right? So if we want to figure out that force, pressure equals force over area, or force equals pressure times area. So the area of a circle, this would just simply be our pi r squared. We'll go ahead and take our pressure here, which we got is 1.3 times 10 to the fifth. Remember, a pascal is a newton per meter squared. And then we'll multiply by the area. So this would be pi times our r squared. Don't forget to convert that to meters. That would be 0.01 meters squared. 
Okay, so when you find that force, you're going to see, oh, the force on the eye. Now, this would be due to both the water and the atmosphere above us. The force on our eye is going to be um, 40.8 newtons. Okay, how much is that? Well, this would be like a four kilogram weight on our eye. How much is four kilograms? About a 10 pounds. So imagine if you had a 10 pound weight just hanging on your eye. That's the force due to the atmosphere and due to liquid. Now, why doesn't our eye just get crushed, right? If I drop a weight like that on your eye, it's probably gonna crush it. Well, think of it this way. In a normal situation, our body is just used to the atmosphere. Okay, I mean, a better question might be, why doesn't the atmosphere just crush me? Okay, 100,000 newtons per meter, that sounds like a big number. Why doesn't it just crush me? Well, the pressure inside my body is pushing back out. And so that's reached this kind of equilibrium state, the pressure in, the pressure out. So a better question might be, what's the net force on our eye? And in this case, we would just take the gauge pressure, whatever our gauge pressure is. Remember, this is ignoring the atmosphere. And so you can just plug in the same numbers, 29.4, plug in your gauge pressure and multiply that by the area. And that'll give you kind of our net force. So I think you get about nine newtons or so. All right, I hope that clarifies for you and um, that'll be it.